Today, I am probably taking on the most difficult challenge I have ever taken on in Trailmakers, and that is to try and build a cyclocopter. Now, if you've never heard of a cyclocopter, don't worry, I'm gonna explain it in a second, but this has been on my list to do for a while, and the reason I haven't done it yet is because I don't know if I actually can. <laughs> This just might not be within my abilities, but I'm going to try to get as far as I can today. Now a cyclocopter is kind of like a helicopter, but instead of your blades rotating on the vertical axis like this, they actually rotate on the horizontal axis like this. Uh, and let me show you an example. Now if you just type in cyclocopter into YouTube, you're probably gonna get this video by Nicholas Rem called Cycloidal Rotor Drone, The Cyclocopter. And to give you an idea of what this thing, uh, at least this version looks like, it looks like this. And flying around, it looks like this. So as you can see, uh, the blades are rotating sideways compared to a regular helicopter. And this right here is why I have avoided trying this for so long. In order for a cyclocopter to work, you need to be able to change the pitch of these blades as it rotates around in a circle, depending on where they are in the rotation. So if you follow a single blade here, you can see it changes its pitch as it rotates around depending on uh, the angle that this center point is from the main center point. So by rotating where this is, you can actually change the direction of lift essentially, which can cause it to go forward and backwards, up and down, etc. Now the problem with trail makers is I can't build this. I am restricted to a 90 degree build grid. So you can see these top and bottom wings are parallel with each other which I could build that way. But when these top and bottom wings are parallel with each other, the other wings have to be on an angle, pitched. And in build mode, I am restricted to placing everything within a 90 degree angle from each other. So I cannot have them start like that with this method here. But the reason why I am trying this video today is because I think I have a workaround that essentially replaces this rigid system here. I just don't know if it's gonna work the way I hope it works. So today, you are either going to see me try very hard and achieve nothing, or see me try very hard and achieve something. <laughs> How this pans out is yet to be determined, but I'm expecting it's going to take a very long time. I will leave a link to this full video down in the description, uh, which you can actually see more fully how a real cyclocopter works. Now, my version is actually going to have four of these, so it's going to be a quad cyclocopter because I do not want to have to rely on a propeller like this for pitch. I'm just going to try to actually make like a quadcopter style control system, assuming I can even get one of these things to work the way I intend to. So. Let's hop back into Trail Makers and hope for the best. All right, so I'm starting with a stand on which I'm going to build the basic uh, motor here. So this is what we're starting with. <laughs> Step number one, smooth sailing so far. If everything else goes like this, uh, we should have this done in no time. It'll be easy. Okay, but obviously it is going to be much more complicated than this. Uh, so let's start building out our frame here to attach all of these propeller or all of these wings. Oh no, I just realized there's something I just didn't even think of until just now. The counter torque. If all of these are rotating in the same direction, there's gonna be a massive counter torque rotating us in the opposite direction. I guess I could have the front and back ones rotate opposite directions. It is a little bit weird to think of, but that should work. This is already more complicated than I was expecting. I was so mentally focused on just the mechanism to adjust the pitch that I never considered what will happen when the motor just starts spinning. Okay, step two is pretty much done. So the way that this is set up right now, they do not pitch in any particular way, uh, which means that they're all essentially canceling each other out and there is no lift being generated. So now you're probably wondering how I intend to have all of this pitch articulation happen. And the way that I'm thinking about doing it is with angle sensors. So if I have an angle sensor, on every single one of these, then essentially I can communicate to the servo to change the pitch when it, re when it reaches a certain part of the cycle. So when this reaches this top 90 degrees of this cycle, I can tell this servo to activate by a certain amount. So let's see if that works. Oh, why is it shaky though? Oh, because it is right on the edge. Okay, okay, hold on. 
I forgot that this is also... I should actually have this um, over here. There we go. Now you can see it is rotated by like 45 degrees. Now the problem is... Uh, that is just one input. I need to have it do the opposite once it reaches the bottom of the cycle. Okay, so here's how I'm doing it. Going into each servo, I have a logic gate. One is going to put negative 0.5, and the other one is going to put positive 0.5. Going into these servos, and I'm going to have two angle sensors, one being the opposite of the other. So now, let me test it with this top one real quick. So you can see it's angled up as it goes to the top. Then it stops angling as it goes to the side, and then it angles down, which is then essentially up again as it goes to the bottom. So there we go. That is the pitch that I wanted right there. So now I got to do that for all of them. This is the point which I'm going to remind everybody that I have no engineering experience, okay? All of my engineering experience comes from these video games. Okay, so I hope if I just hooked everything up correctly, they should all work now. Okay, one of them doesn't work. Why Why one of them? Which one is it? That triggers that, that triggers that, that should trigger that. What? Okay, you know what? I'm gonna delete that one. And I am just literally going to copy this, rotate it twice, and put it back. Oh, look at that. All right, it works. I have that going for me, which is nice, <laughs> but I can't even test if it gives the appropriate amount of lift. What if I put max speed on this? Is that going to be... Oh, that is pretty fast, but you can't even see it working, but I think technically it should be working. Oh, you know what I can do? I've just enabled the time mod and I can change it to... Sp I can change the speed. So if I go to 20% speed, now we're at 20% speed. I don't know if they go fast enough for this speed. Oh, you know what I gotta do? I gotta change all of the rest of them to max speed. There we go. Oh yeah, there we go. Now they're responding in time. Okay. Is it as simple as just copy and pasting this to the other side? Will it function uh, mirrored? Oh no. Wait a minute. Everything got messed up now. Okay. There, there's a big problem in Trail Makers when it comes to copy and pasting with logic. Because now if I look at what this is hooked up to, you can see this is actually hooked up to the opposite side as well. It, it copies the connection over to the mirrored side from the original side, which is not what we want. So I have to undo that for every single one now. And I gotta go in the reverse direction. All the ones on the right side are also cross-wired to the left side too. All right, now does it work? Oh no! Oh no, is it gonna do the thing? Oh, it's, it's doing the unstable thing. Oh my goodness, look at that. Okay, please don't let that be the problem. All right, what happens if I go slow-mo? What is going on? All right, you know what? I need more separation between these sides. All right, is that better? All right, that appears to be better. Okay, so now it looks like everything is working together. Excellent. All right, and then at full speed, it looks like that. So now the question is, does this, does this create lift? I know torque is going to absolutely ruin this, but what happens if I'm not attached to the ground? It seems like it wants to lift. Uh, torque is an issue, though. I'm going to create a system that kind of is the equivalent of that little pivot in the middle of the real cy cyclocopter that can change where the force is happening. And I'm going to do that by adding the ability to rotate the angle sensors. Okay, so now you can see if I hold W, all of the angle sensors will rotate in one direction. And uh, if I hold S, they will rotate in the other direction. And I'm gonna do it on just one side for now so we can compare how it affects it. All right, activating slow motion here. So now you can see at the top, both sides are trying to rotate. But if I hold down W, now you can see they are rotating in a different area. They're actually rotating more at the back. So at full speed, if I press W, Oh, look at that. It leans to the left because I'm getting more lift on the right. If I press S, it leans to the right because I think it's getting less lift on the right, um, according to the rotation. So I think theoretically that's working. So now let's apply the same thing to the other side and see if we can actually translate this to real lift. Whoa, whoa, we're getting lift. Oh, no way, we're getting lift. Oh. 
All right, let me do an experiment here. Let me just copy this entire thing and put it right in the back here. They should all, oh no, they're gonna be cross-wired still, aren't they? Okay, I think I have uncross-wired everything. Let's see if uh, it all appears to work. Ooh, oh my goodness. All right, the only issue right now is uh, first the torque. I only have essentially one control. Yeah, so that's a torque issue right now. What if I just turn this around? Oh, this is interesting. Now I have control over my pitch so I can lift the front side up and then I can go back down and lift the back side up all by uh, just rotating these like that, which is really interesting. Okay, I might regret this, but I'm gonna try to replace these with um, helicopter servos to see if I can get a little bit more speed. Oh man, it's so close. Look at this. We are so close to like part of a cyclocopter functionality. The lift. Okay, this is so confusing to look at. But the rotation of the angle sensors, oh, this is so hard to look at. Everything's just like floating around. But the rotation of the angle sensors are now going opposite each other rather than with each other. Whatever direction of force I change on the front, I actually change it the opposite in the back to cancel out. So that means that they're always going to be fighting against each other, which means I don't pitch. Instead, I just get more or less lift, depending on where the thrust vector essentially is. Um, so you can see when I start going, I go up, and if I change the angle, uh, I can start going down. The only thing with this is now I have no pitch control, but I think I have all of the elements necessary now to s essentially be able to program each individual one to be able to independently control lift, which I don't know how I intend to do that. But, oh man, look at this. Oh, this is like, I just, oh boy. Okay, now we're getting into a bit of a, something's wrong there. Wait, how are we still, I guess, no, that makes sense. It, <laughs> this is so weird. This is already a partial success. It's kind of amazing. Now, how do I independently control each one? Like if I want to pitch forward, I need the back one to angle with more lift. And if I want to pitch to the side, I need the right ones to angle with more lift than the left ones. Ooh, this is, this is getting complicated. All right, I think I've got ideas though. Okay, all right, I'm figuring it out. I have altitude control now. So when I press left shift, you can see all of them, all of the angle sensors rotate in one direction. When I let go, they revert back to zero. And then when I press left control, they will all rotate in the opposite direction. And what that allows me to do is it just so happens that the zero point is kind of like a, a neutral hover. Um, but then when I press shift, I rise up. So then when I let go, I kind of even out, and then when I press control, I come down. So there's altitude control. Okay, now let's see if I've successfully uh, incorporated pitch into this. So, oh yeah, oh, oh yes. So I go up, and then I can pitch forward, and then I can pitch backwards. And pretty much whenever I let go of any of these controls, it will default back to a steady neutral point, which is gonna be really interesting. Ooh, I got it. Look at that. I've got roll left to right. And then let's go ahead and pitch forward. Yeah. Look at that. Now I do not have um yaw. How do I do yaw? I don't think I can do yaw actually. Because in order to do yaw, I would have to do forward and back on a horizontal and I'd have to have the right side go forward and the left side go back. But I cannot do that or at least I or not that I can't but I don't know how okay I got an idea so the issue that I need to do is I need to figure out how to independently make the front one provide forward thrust and the back one provide forward thrust even though the wings are technically facing in opposite directions so in order to do that I'm just gonna give myself some wheels so I can see how the thrust is affecting me on the horizontal plane and then what I can do is I can lock one side at a time and figure out what angle uh, these things need to be at. okay so it already is pretty much almost forward it's forwards and up by default on both sides but they're going in opposite directions so they cancel each other out so if I go down 
Now I'm doing forwards and down. Okay, so there's it's something in between the default and the down position for the front one. Now let's see if I can actually go forwards uh, using the back propeller. Ooh. Ooh, okay, this is gonna change everything. But I think I need to increase the total range on these and the total speed on these. I basically need these to snap into the position to give the desired movement as quickly as possible. Ooh, there we go. There we go, look at that. That is forward now using the back propeller. All right, so what I'm doing right now is actually fine tuning the angle so that when I press the button, you can see when I press the button, all of these angle sensors move just slightly. What that does is that particular angle makes me go just barely, you can see I'm just barely lifting up. So that means I'm a little bit too positively buoyant. I just want to go in that single direction. So right now I am at 0.07. So now if I go to 0 0.08, I'm, I want to just get horizontal without lifting up. And that might be the exact degrees of rotation that I need. Now I need to find the opposite. So let's try 0 0.7. This is probably going to give us upwards. Yep. Okay. 0 0.76. Ooh. 0.74. Oh, look at that. So between 0.76 and 0.74 is forward without upward. All right, I think 0.76 is forward and 0.07 is backwards. Now I got to do that same dialing in for the uh, front set of propellers. Okay, so now I should theoretically have forward and back. Uh, let's go ahead and unlock the back set and have them work together. See if I can go forwards and backwards. The transition might cause me to pitch a little. No, 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 don't do this now. You were just, no. I just had everything set and working. I just finished programming it and it was working fine. Stop it, stop it. Don't, don't, don't. Okay, all right, when I'm going, it's fine. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and uh, adjust myself here. Okay, ready? Forward. It's not working. Backward? Why aren't they working together? What? Wait, it got reversed? Oh, well, that's why it wasn't working. I accidentally reversed the controls. Okay, all right, now it should work. Okay, one, yes, and two. Oh! <gasps> Okay, that works on the ground. Does it work in the air? Ready? And one. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, all right. Not quite. Two. Okay, so we need to adjust something a little bit. There we go. Look at that. Going forward. Okay, okay. Okay, ready? Now backwards. Yeah, it kind of evens out. Look at that. We're pretty we're strafing in the air now. Backwards and forwards. Now I can should be able to route that control to the left and right independently to cause yaw. And then I will have full control over this thing. Okay, I think I have routed it all. So now when I press Q, the right side should go forward and the left side should go backwards, causing some yaw. Okay, here we go. Q works perfect. E. It works perfect. I think I've just built fully functioning cyclocopter. I can roll like this. Like, the only thing this can't do, which I don't think is even within its capabilities, is it can't strafe left and right. But I don't see any practical way for that to work because um, none of the direction of force goes in the horizontal direction. So the really cool thing about this force is like, no matter how I pitch, like if I pitch all the way forward, if I just let go, it just automatically zeroes back. It doesn't seem to do that with roll, though. Yeah, roll doesn't seem to have that similar effect, which is interesting. Um, but it does it with pitch for sure. And it's so stable once you just let go of everything. It just stays there. That's so good. I love this. I cannot believe this actually worked. I thought this was not going to be doable in Trailmakers, but it is working. I'm just going to give this thing some better landing gear so I can actually land this thing. And then let's do our ultimate flight test. Whenever I build a flying vehicle, I always try to do a final test where I try to take off from a position and land in a designated position to show that I have control over where I'm going and that I can actually land it. So we're going to fly from here all the way up to the helipad. All right, I've given it some landing gear and I've painted it up and something weird's happening. For some reason, when I'm just hovering, 
it consistently yaws to the right, like, a lot. And I don't know how that could be happening. Like, yeah, when I just sit here, it just yaws to the right. Now, when I go up, it actually equals out and stays steady. But when I let go, it yaws to the right. And the weird thing is, is when nothing, when there's no inputs, everything should be perfectly symmetrical. And even I can turn mirror mode on and I wouldn't be able to turn mirror mode on if it wasn't symmetrical. It makes no sense to me why this would be happening. But uh, I guess I'll just deal with that. Let's see if I can fly up to that helipad and successfully land this thing. Here we go. So I have my controls. I've actually, uh, I've streamlined the controls a little bit more. Oh boy, this thing's actually, it's gonna take a long time to get there, isn't it? So now uh, W goes straight and it doesn't actually tilt nearly as much. It actually stays pretty level, which I like. And same thing when I go backwards, um, it stays more level rather than uh, doing the pitch because I wanted to make it very, very clear that we're just going forward and back. We're not pitching forward like a helicopter does. We are just literally going forward. The only thing is that uh, there's a conflict in controls to go forward and up. This is what happens if I press both of those controls, which is interesting in and of itself, but you kind of have to choose one or the other. Like if you want to go forward, you go, you let go of up and you go forward. If you want to go up, you let go of forward and you can go up. I'm sure somebody with some deeper logic and programming capabilities could make it so that the controls do not interfere with each other. Um, but I, I've, I've already gone in way over my head and somehow have managed to accomplish what I set out to accomplish. But it's all riding on this landing here. All right, so now that I'm done going up, now I can go forward. There we go. All right, yeah, going forward also yaws to the left a little bit. It seems to want to yaw to the left for some reason, even though everything should be pretty symmetrical. Okay, so now we got to lower ourselves down. I'm going to try to get as close to the center as possible. There we go. So uh, with control, I can actually change my altitude to go down a little bit more. And all that's doing is just changing the thrust vectors to be less up and more out, out to the uh, front and back. Opposing each other. Alright, let's see if I can get like a really, oh boy, really smooth landing here. Not as quite as centered as I wanted it to be, but I don't have a strafe left and right function. So that is one downside to this. I actually have to tilt or uh, roll to go left and right. But that is a successful landing. This thing is pretty easy to control. All right, and now just for fun, let's go ahead and activate the time mod at 10% uh, speed to see if we can actually see everything going on here. Look at that. So it is hard to see while everything's moving, but if you look closely, you can see all of, if you follow one of them, you can see it rotating as it goes around. So now I'm gonna uh, change it to forward functionality. And yeah, it's really hard to see. Even at 10% speed, it is hard to actually see it functioning, but I think you guys by the I think you guys know how it functions by now and oh boy things work a little bit different in super slow-mo That's for sure. There we go. So yeah, this was an overwhelming success Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you guys learned something fun And if you have any other suggestions that don't require as, as much brain power as this one uh, I would I'd be happy to hear those so uh, let me know about that down in the comments below and maybe Maybe you'll see it in a future video after I agonize over how I'm going to do it for weeks. All right, if you enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy more that you can see on the end screen right here. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.